All right, for this project, we are going to be making an Avengers movie poster. Now to do this, we're going to need to download several different images, and you can get all of these off the class website, or you can just Google each one of these characters and do an image search, and it'll be easy enough to find them. That's how I found them. So this is what we're going to make. Let's get started. I'm going to close this out, and I've already got all of my pictures saved to a folder on our desktop called Avengers Movie Poster. Let's go into Photoshop. We're going to create a new file by going to File and New. First thing we need to type in is the width, which is going to be 8. The height is 10. Make sure you're working in inches. Since it's going to be printed off, let's set our resolution to 300 dpi, and our color mode will be CMYK. We'll hit OK, and this is what we'll be working on. The first thing, I want, new tool I want to teach you is the paint bucket tool. And what we're going to do is quickly fill in this background area. If you'll notice our background layer is usually default at white. Let's go over to our toolbox and it's usually located under the gradient tool. We're looking for the paint bucket tool and it looks like a regular bucket of paint tipped on its side spilling over. With it selected, we'll go up to our tool options and make sure that foreground is selected. We want to set our color mode to normal and make sure the opacity is 100%. Since we're only working on the background layer, we can just keep this at continuous or all layers. Checked off, it doesn't really matter. Next, let's make sure our foreground color is set to black, and it is. I'll hit OK. And all I have to do is click right in the center and it will fill in all the white area of that layer with that foreground color. I could have set it to anything and it would quickly fill in all the white pixels as being black. <clears throat> the next pic uh, picture we need to load up is the background of the Earth. This is the Earth JPEG, so I'm going to click and drag it down to Photoshop and open it up. We want to make sure it opens up in another window because we're going to use our move tool, the black arrow, to click on it and drag and release it onto our new document. And remember doing this will cause a new layer to be created. So if we'll look in our layers palette, you can see that layer one is our earth picture and the background layer is just nothing but black. So with it selected, you can move it around wherever you want. What I want to do is I want to make the earth take up a lot more of my image and I need to be able to rotate it. So another tool that we're going to learn with layer one selected, let's go up to edit, down to transform, and let's rotate our image. Clicking on rotate, you'll see you'll get a little bounding box with the little um, squares at the corners and the sides of our image. If we were to click and drag at any of these little points, you'll see that it rotates however much we need it to. And I actually want it to rotate so that the earth is parallel to the top and bottom of our picture. Once you get it rotated to the area that you want, rotation that you want, let's look up in our toolbox at the very top middle of our screen and you see there's a check mark. If you want to lock in the rotation that you've made, you can hit the check mark and the bounding boxes will go away. Another thing you can do is just hit the return key on your keyboard and that will lock in the same thing. Next thing we need to do is to scale it. I want to make it bigger so it will take up our project. So let's go back to Edit, Transform, and then choose Scale. Again, we'll get our transforming bounding box. And with this, if I click on any of the, the points, I can move it around and resize, make it taller or narrower, as much as I need. If I hold down my shift key, you can see I'll make it get much larger, but it'll stay proportional to its sizes so it doesn't get skewed or get off very much. And what I want to do is make it just big enough so that the sides of the earth are stretching out to each side of our page. As soon as we're done, we want to lock it in. I'm going to hit the return key this time. And now I've got it bigger and rotated right where I want it to be. I'm going to close out our Earth JPEG and let's start adding characters to our movie poster itself. The first one we're going to add is, there he is, Nick Fury. This is Samuel L. Jackson's character. 
drag him into Photoshop. <clears throat> we want to take his image and be able to put him on the left side of our new document. So with our Move tool selected, I'm going to click and drag him over into our new document. Now we've learned before that you can take out a variety of pixels by using our eraser tool, but I want to show you a much better way of working uh, that is not as destructive as erasing away the pixels because if you make a mistake you want to be able to undo what you've done. And to do this we're going to do what's called layer masking. So first thing I need to do is select my character himself. So let's choose our quick selection tool. And remember our quick selection acts just like a paintbrush so if I click in certain areas and drag over you can see he's quickly finding the edges of his shape. The more I click, the more it will add on. If I get too much or get an area that I don't want, you can hold down your option key and click and that will erase away an area. But what I want to be able to do is to select just his character. Oh, see I've gotten too much so I'm going to hold down my option key and click on this outside area and get rid of all that black. Perfect. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're working on. Now with him selected and he's on layer 2 and layer 2 is selected we're going to go to layer and then down to layer mask and we want to reveal the selection. Now what this is going to do is create, once it's selected you see it got rid of the background, all the black that was around it. If you look in our layers palette we have another little icon that's uh, selected next to it <clears throat> and it has a black outline and a little white silhouette. That's because this is creating a special layer within layer 2. Everything that's black and on this layer has been masked out and everything that's white will be revealed. If I was to grab my paintbrush tool and notice our colors we can only work in black and white and if I was to paint in, let's see, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller give it a harder edge. If I was to start to paint in an area you can see it looks like I'm erasing out that area. In actuality what I'm doing is painting in a mask of that area. If I was to swap up my color from black to white and start painting in again I have the ability to undo what I've done because I'm painting on a white area. If I continue to paint, you can see I pick up this black area again and paint in those pixels. So adding a layer mask to an area versus actually painting it out, excuse me, erasing it out, is a lot better because it's a lot more forgiving. If you make a mistake, all you've got to do is swap to white or a shade of gray. And it'll allow you to paint in his area, paint in his picture again. Let's back it up. That looks pretty good, so I want to move him over to this side. Let's make him a little bigger. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, Scale, and click. I'm holding down my Shift key, and when I drag out, he gets much, much bigger. We're going to put him off to the side. Hit Return to lock it in. Let's do one more thing. I don't want him to have such a hard edge to his outline. I want to have him fade into the background. So I'm clicking on my layer mask. Make sure that your layer mask is selected, not just the layer itself. I'm going to select my paintbrush again. Let's this time let's bump it up, make it a big brush. Yeah, 300 pixels, 300, 400 pixels, and change the hardness of our brush to very, very soft, down to zero percent. This time, instead of painting in at 100 percent opacity, I'm going to drop my opacity down to about let's say about 20, 20 or so percent. Now I've got black selected for my foreground color. When I start to paint in it will erase out the area very very gradually and this will allow me to control how much he's being faded into the background. It may take several clicks but after a while his character will start to fade in now he doesn't have that hard edge. He easily fades from one area to the other. And again, all I'm working on is my layer mask for layer 2.
If I accidentally clicked on his picture and started painting, let's see, it's bumping back up, it'll actually paint in black, and that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to undo that. So make sure you're working right on the new layer mask of the layer that you have created. That looks good. We're going to do the same thing for each one of the characters. So I'm going to go back, close him out. I think the next one we want to add is Thor, yeah, at the very top. So let's drag him down to the Photoshop icon. Again, the first thing you need to do is to drag it onto our document. Once he's on here, let's choose our quick selection tool. And I'm going to just select out his character really quickly. If I make a mistake, that's no problem. Remember, you can go back in and clean up the mask once you have him selected. Zoom in so I can see what I'm working on. All right, that's pretty good for there. Let me show you a quicker way of making a layer mask. Rather than going to the layer and making layer mask, if you'll look at the very bottom of your layers palette, there is an icon that has a rectangle with a white circle on it. And that's uh, in one click with your selection made, it will add a layer mask and it will reveal everything that you already had selected. So it masks out the background. You can see that's in black. And the little white area is our figure that we have. And then you can see we need to clean up looks like his head and a few other spots. So I'm going to zoom in some more. Choose my paintbrush. And I'm using my close bracket to make it smaller to get into these small little areas working around here. Since I'm only working in black and white, you'll notice that the foreground is black and the background is white. If I was to hit my X button on the keyboard, it'll quickly swap the foreground and background back and forth. So I don't have to keep selecting an area to move back and forth between erasing out pixels or masking out pixels and adding pixels on. I can just in one hit go back and forth to the two different colors. That looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to make my brush a lot bigger by hitting my close bracket. And I want to have him fade out as well. So I've got black selected. And I'm going to change my opacity down to about 20%. And in several clicks, we want to just quickly, quickly have him fade down to the bottom just like that. I'm going to hit Command-0 and that'll bring him into full. I've got my Move tool now. I'm going to position him towards the top. We can close him out and let's go and do the same thing for each one of the characters that are added on. Okay, now that I've got all of our characters onto our movie poster, and they're all positioned relatively where I want them to be, the last thing we need to do is to add the logo to the very bottom of our picture. So let's go back to our pictures and get the Avengers logo. Drag it into Photoshop. And again, we're going to drag it down to our new document. Notice that it's a little bit too big, so let's go up with that layer selected to our edit down to transform and let's scale it in as well remember to hold down the shift key so that everything remains proportional if you don't hold down the shift key you're likely to get it too tall or too skinny and narrow holding down the shift key keeps it just right and we're going to move it down to the bottom remember to hit the return key to lock it in and we're going to change this layer mode from normal down to, let's see, I believe it was lighten color. And this way it'll add in to the bottom. All the dark pixels will be removed and all the light pixels will shine through. As soon as you're done with your movie poster, you can print it off on the color printer.